In this video, we'll discuss a few applications of radical equations. Oftentimes, they show up in physics types problems. One way to measure the amount of energy that, is a, that a moving object, such as a car, possesses is by finding its kinetic energy. The kinetic, the kinetic energy, E sub k, measured in joules of an object depends on the object's mass, measured in kilograms, and velocity, measured in meters per second, and can be written as the velocity is equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. What is the kinetic energy of an object with a mass of 1,000 kilograms and is traveling at 30 meters per second? So we're going to plug these into where they go. The mass, m, is 1,000. The velocity is 30. So 30 is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass, which is 1,000. We solve this equation by squaring both sides. 30 squared is 900 is equal to uh, 2 e sub k all over 1,000. The square and the square root cancel each other out. We can multiply both sides of the equation by 1,000. We get 9 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, which is 900,000. That's equal to 2 times the kinetic energy. We divide by 2. 900,000 divided by 2 is 450,000 joules is equal to the kinetic energy. Uh, of this object. Another example, the period of a simple pendulum, that's talking about how long it takes for a pendulum to complete one cycle, can be calculated using the formula t, t being the time it takes to complete one cycle, 2 pi, pi being 3.14, uh, times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by the gravitational pull or the acceleration due to gravity. What's the acceleration due to gravity? That's g, so we're trying to solve for g here in the equation, where a simple pendulum having a length of two, so that would be our L value, has a period of 1.7989, that would be our t value. So 1.7989 is equal to two pi times the square root of L, which we said was 2.0, divided by g is what we're trying to solve for. In order to solve this equation, we got to get the radical by itself. So we divide both sides by 2 pi. We're going to round to four decimal places. We get 0.2863, if we were to type that in a calculator, is equal to the square root of 2 over g. We can now square both sides of this equation. Again, rounding to four decimal places leads us to 0.0820 is equal to 2 over g. We can multiply both sides of the equation by g. We get 0 0.0820 g is equal to 2. And we can divide by 0 0.0820 on both sides. And again, rounding to two decimal places, we get the gravitational pull is approximately equal to 24.3992, or really close to 24.4 meters per second squared. What planet could be the sea be on? Uh, if you think about gravitational pull, Earth in meters per second is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. If we look at uh, this planet, this planet's got to be much larger because it's got a much larger uh, gravitational pull. So probably something like Jupiter. And if you look up the exact uh, measurement for Jupiter, Jupiter is 24.79 meters per second squared, actually.